Hello everyone. Um it's 4:30 in the morning where I am right now at the moment and I've been extremely sick here. Um uh, but in a slight bit of an upswing. Um uh, I actually was gifted these really nice new sheets with a little flamingo on them. So from my mom, which is really kind of a big deal for me. I, I love flamingos. They're some of my favorite animals. Flamingos and, um, you know, flamingos, kitties, bunnies. Oh, all kinds of dolphins, manatees, sewing needles, dragonflies, uh, butterflies, seahorses. These are, these are my favorite living things. Bamboo, too. I love bamboo and I love grass. Not, you know pot but you know <laughs> anyway uh on to the subject i was trying to sorry for that tangent this is a video i've been wanting to make for a while now it obviously is going to be a voiceover there's not going to be anything visually to see essentially it's going to be a podcast um i'm recording it again with my phone because i'm stuck in bed and because of how dehydrated and sick i've been here i'm not able to sleep dehydration keeps you from sleeping so um i'm sorry about the visuals also my phone is charging while i'm recording this so i hope that doesn't lessen the voice at all um but yeah i'm gonna just i'm just gonna go ahead and start in this is i've been wanting to make this video for a while it's what i experienced during my near near death experience uh, as they call it, I suddenly I realized why is it called near death? Because I actually died for all of like 20 seconds. But yeah, um, I'm alive to speak about it today. So yeah, my my NDE, my near death experience. And I I've been wanting to speak this for some time, but it was I don't know. It's like I couldn't put it into my conscious mind and then bring it into actual spoken words so hopefully i could do it some kind of justice now while i was passing and and what happened was that while i was passing away i looking back i realize now that and and i don't i don't have another way to explain it at the moment other than in what is quote spiritual unquote terms uh, at least for today's knowledge and terminology but what seemed to be happening was that i was the more I died, the more I felt and became like shot through, like riddled, like with bullets, just to the point where, you know, like a building that's just completely gone. There isn't any building left. There's just nothing but bullet holes everywhere. It was like that. I was filled full with everyone else's emotions and thoughts to the point where it's like even my emotions were completely wiped away and I was not my own emotions anymore. And I was entirely everyone else's emotions. And not only was I entirely everyone else's emotions, I actually started, it's like I completely became everyone else's emotions. That's literally what happened to me. And, and it wasn't just everyone else's emotions, but it was everyone else's emotions towards me like what they thought about me what they felt about me and it was like about me specifically um and i have to admit at the time i was you know i'm still not liked now but i mean it's not like abusiveness just goes away my family is very abusive uh even to this day uh very dysfunctional and when you have someone who's either mentally ill, which there's horrible retardation in my family, uh, or physically ill, which has been my damnation, literally my torture, my damnation in life. Uh, you know, I mean, my family members literally told me to my face that I was a deadbeat. You know, they said that the retarded people in my family are deadbeats, that they shouldn't be having to, you know, support them. I mean, uh, I had uh, an aunt who was... You know, everyone kept on saying that she was lying. Even in the school that she went to, the teachers would harass, literally bully my mother and ask her 
why her sister was and these you know why her sister was acting like she was when her sister was clearly retarded you know granted this was back in the 60s but you know so even you know people outside my family have been very abusive and and very abusive to me also so it it hasn't just been me it's been you know anyone anyone and it's not just my family but still um and i'm trying to keep from going on tangents here i'm very underslept sorry but yeah so my family very much saw me as lazy not wanting to work a deadbeat and then i and i knew i was dying and i was doing everything in my power to prevent it and before i was stopped from being able to work at all uh, i was doing everything in my power to be able to get and keep jobs which you know was not working because my family would ruin them you know they call me a deadbeat and then they ruin any chance i had at being able to keep any job i realize now looking back but um so anyway and and i know that people will ask well, why didn't you leave well oprah put it the best way she said when you're when you're living in crazy's house when you're driving crazy's car when you're eating crazy's food basically it wasn't like that for me but literally when you know you have a choice to either die literally physically out on the street or you can die on a carpeted rug rug with a roof over your head even though the people in that house are they'll physically kick you they'll hit you but it's still dying on a carpet with a roof over your head and so yeah not only that but there's no strength to actually physically get up and um and walk away i mean that just when when it takes everything in you to crawl to the bathroom and then crawl back and you have to take rests just to do that you know um anyway that that aside anyway so yeah my family was very very abusive and my brother was living at home at the time and i swear i i ended up being filled being riddled with their their anger and their despisement their absolute revulsion of me their disgust of me their despisement of me their hate of me their belittling of me they're looking down on me and it's like i became absolutely riddled with their despisement of me and it's like i ended up becoming riddled with everybody's despisement of me stretching out beyond my house to stretching to everyone and everything in the universe and in existence and i alone was fighting against all that and in the end it's like i became all of that hate and i decided that if i ever die again uh because i've 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 come close to it again and every time i am still filled with that hate that despisement of me that uh finger pointing towards me you know saying that you know like i'm lying about being sick you know that you know i'm not actually sick at all that you know it's just absolutely insane things i mean these people are like bosses you can literally give them a note from the doctor where the doctor says yes this person does have cancer and they'll say no you don't you're lying and it's like wow seriously okay you know just i mean what do you say to something like that someone who you know like a boss lies and doesn't believe facts that are presented to them even when they have a person of authority presenting them facts so but yeah so i was i was just this is really rambly and really disjointed i'm really sorry but i really wanted to say this because this was so important when someone is dying think only good thoughts towards them feel only good feelings towards them because i swear to you 
that person that is dying is very conscious, is very alive, and they feel everything that you feel about them, towards them, and they feel all of your thoughts towards them and about them. And all of the thoughts and the feelings that I still have being projected towards me even today are, are negative. Whether it's coming from people out, you know, out in the world, or whether it's coming from my own immediately, my immediate family members. And I don't know if it's this Abraham Hicks kind of thing where attract, attract, you know, or like, you know, birds of a feather flock together, like evilness attracts evilness, happiness attracts happiness, you know, light attracts light, dark, at, dark attracts dark. I don't know if it's something like that. Or if it's something, you know, far more scientific. Uh, my guess is that what this is, is that, think of it, batteries, I had a battery sitting around here. Oh, well, batteries are little physical objects that are just, they don't move, yet they have chemicals in them. Well, think of what kind of a, how strong that battery would be if you could get the chemicals in that battery just to move, just to circulate. You know, when I say circulate, just go in a circle in that battery, whether it be a little oval because it's a, you know, a rectangular battery or, you know, if you make the battery square or round, just get the chemicals in that battery to just move, just turn, and think of how much power that battery will actually create power. Now, it will only create power for a certain amount of time because the chemicals obviously decay and degrade, and they're not a human body like people are, where the chemicals in our body uh, are constantly being replenished because we're eating, you know, and because we're sleeping, and because, I'm sorry, but we're going to the bathroom. So the chemicals in our body do not, you know, it, they don't stay there. While in a battery, they stay there. So my thought is that every human body is made up of chemicals, just like a battery. We have essentially the same chem chemicals in us. And those chemicals are circulating. And I know for a fact, because I've run into other people, my mom, every time she's worn a watch... Uh, that watch has sped up and I knew I dated someone who uh, she could not wear a watch even the new fancy like eye watches because they all died on her that every last one of them I've I've known people who I've known people who can't even have cell phones because they're I don't know their chemical properties are so strong that they mess up the electronics of of the cell phone back in the days of before smartphones but you know so I believe strongly that every human body creates an energy source that at the current point in time we can't read, but I'm positive that it creates an energy source and some people, their energy sources are strong enough to affect the electronics around them to either quickly drain batteries or make it so that the batteries never seem to need charging. You know, and it has nothing to do whether you're a positive thinking person or a negative thinking person. You know, items just, you know, it's and it's because of the chemical makeup of your body. And the chemical makeup of your body equals the electric makeup of your body. And I think that uh, that is what, that is literally energy. And that when I was passing away, that's what I was actually feeling these strong energy properties that my family members were putting out and specifically the energy properties that had obviously to do with me because my body must have been reaching out for salvation, protection, just, you know, literally salvation to save itself from dying. So, uh, and yeah, and what I was filled with was my family's hate of me and disgust of me, because that's all I felt. That's all I became, just pure hate, pure disgust. And I didn't hate myself. I ended up hating them. And I didn't, you know, 
I was, I was literally fighting an ocean. And my anger against them, their anger against me was cemented like forever ago. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, that and their, they decided to distrust me because they decided that I'm not physically ill, even though I was dying. But, yeah. So, anyway, that, that was it. Uh, it... <laughs> Let me try to sum it up here. Um, give me a second. My mouth is so dry. I, I got to take a sip. So. So I don't know what to say other than, I guess to sum it up, when we're dying, from my personal experience, this is what I experienced, what we feel and what we become are the emotions that everyone else has projected towards us and feels towards us and feels about us and thinks about us whatever they think about us and feel about us, we seem to become when we die. And if there's nothing but hate being projected towards someone, then more than likely, you know, in my mind, get ready to get haunted because <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. But, uh, you know, just... If you have nothing but hate projected towards a person, then more than likely that's what's, you know, if there is such a thing as the afterlife or ghosts or whatever, which I don't think there is, but uh, actually I have, I have my own personal proof that there isn't now, but it just, it feels terrible to be be dying and to have that negativity projected not only towards you but into your very soul so you know think and feel only positive things towards someone who's who's dying literally i i don't think it counts too much i mean Personally, I still believe that we're still conscious and alive and feeling until our spinal column and brain is completely gone, you know, liquidated, whether it be via cremation or actually liquefying the sucker or whatever. Um, maybe being eaten away by something. But yeah, so. And as far as I'm concerned, you feel all that negativity or positivity until those parts of you, your brain and your spinal column are finally gone, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I do hope that once blood to the brain is cut, unconsciousness does happen. But after my experience here back in 2014, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I got to admit, I've gotten pretty darn close here again. And I hope, you know, I, I keep hoping for health and wellness. But, I mean, it's kind of like me becoming a multimillionaire. It's like me becoming a multimillionaire overnight. It's just not going to happen, you know, and it's like me becoming, you know, actually being able to find someone who's worthy, you know, who I would like to marry. I mean, that's, that's never going to happen. You know, I mean, it just, so yeah. Um, but there you go. Um, 
that's it. This is at the 20 minute mark, so I'm going to cut it off. But I'm glad that I finally recorded this. I'm glad that I finally am posting it. Uh, I might try to clean it up and clarify it later on. But, I mean, I might have more stuff about my near-death experience. I wouldn't be surprised as more stuff hits me or I realize things. But this is... I don't know, this is this is the only other thing that I can think of, other than to just reiterate what I've already said in my other videos. But this was this was very, very important to me. I wanted to say it. Uh and I just I don't think it's something spiritual. I'm positive that it's actually very scientific and very physically provable. We just haven't got the technology currently to record and graph, you know, read these things, such as energy signatures that the human body puts out, such as the fact that people are just little walking batteries, and the fact that you actually do have the ability to, you know, if the earth is one massive battery or energy signature, I mean, it, it clearly is because it has magnetism that is strong enough to you know, turn the needle of a compass. So if we're batteries, I wouldn't be surprised if we're able to control this magnetism, this energy that the earth has. I mean, there's all kinds of hippie people who talk about that. And I agree with it now. I think it's the truth. So especially after what I experienced during my near-death experience. So... There you go. Um, and I know that saying this kind of contradicts the other videos that I put up about my near-death experience, but I don't care. I mean, I just, I really don't care. This, this is what I experienced. This is what I felt. This is what I went through. You can call it spiritual if you want. I call it, you know, undiscovered science or... Yeah, just undiscovered science, un unlooked into science, in my mind. So, yeah. Only think and feel good things about people when they're dying or when they're sick, because otherwise, if such a thing as ghosts exists, <laughs> you, you'll probably get haunted. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, as for me, I, you know... I felt every last bit of negativity that my family was shoving towards me and thinking about me. And I wish that that wasn't the case, but that was the case. And I just became... The automatic reaction is to call it evil and dark, but I wouldn't... I would call it defensively dark. Or darkly defensive. Because, you know, instead of becoming this simpering sap that they were considering me as, becoming this, quote, loser who's lying, unquote, as they've called me um, to my face physically many times before, um, I, I, I became you know, the exact opposite of that, thankfully. I, I stayed true to myself, and I was like, you know, what you th people think about me is a lie, and and I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> that was the only thing that mattered, was proving them wrong. And still to this day, but, yeah. Anyway, I'm really starting to ramble now. If If I can figure out how to... How to clean this up, I will. But that's it for now. This is at the 24 mark, minute mark. I, I'm going to cut it off. Sorry about that. And I hope you like my little... My little flamingo sheets. And sorry about the... Uh, well, the video quality. Even the voice quality. But I'm glad I uploaded this. And that's it. Bye.